Hey church, appreciate you clicking on here today as we talk some tools in our devotionals of how to do certain things to kind of grow in our faith. And today's talk real quick is about how to do a devotional time with teenagers in your house. Now, as you're younger, it looks completely different and Pastor Drew will talk to you about that. But as you get teenagers, uh, it gets completely unique and uh, at times stressful in doing kind of a family devotional. So I've got some kind of bullet point tips to kind of walk through to help all of us as I've got three teenagers in my house, how to do a family devotional. And when you do a family devotional, whether it's you're reading a Bible, uh, maybe a chapter at a time and discussing it, or maybe you're doing like a, a devotional book, you know, a devotional day or something like that. Here's some kind of practical things to kind of keep in mind when you're going through a devotional with your teenagers in the house. The first one is to make sure that you're flexible. It doesn't have to be every single day. It doesn't have to be every single night uh, with work schedule, church, maybe ball games, uh, all kinds of other things that your kids may be involved in, homework. Uh, having that repetition of every night may be pretty daunting for your schedule. So what you need to do is make sure you schedule once a week or once every other week or maybe every other day, depending on the rhythm of your family, but make sure you're flexible with that. If something comes in the way of that, it's not the end of the world. You can just punt it to the next day, but remain flexible when you do have a family devotional time. Also, try not to be too serious. Now, again, we're talking about doing a family devotional with teenagers. There's a time to be serious and there's a time to be kind of entertaining and engaging and not coming to the plate thinking that every devotional has to be the most life-changing, impactful moment in your life, maybe your spouse's life, or in your children's life. So don't be too serious with it and allow those moments to kind of come and go. Not every moment is giantly impactful and life-changing. Uh, another thing, especially when it comes with teenagers, you gotta accept silliness. Even if you have a teenage boy who's 17, he still acts like he's a four-year-old sometimes. Uh, and same thing for girls. So accept some silliness. There's off-the-wall comments. There's all kinds of weird to secondary discussions. Uh, we don't want to lecture in our family devotional time. We want to kind of just guide them in their conversation. So accept some silliness and let it be memorable and not wrong uh, when you're doing that. One thing I tell my kids all the time is this. No question is a stupid question. You may assume that they should know something in the Bible, but they may have been in church all their life and they're 17 years old and then they ask the most basic question. Accept that, appreciate that, and affirm those questions that they ask. So no question is a wrong question or a stupid question. All questions come from either your head or for your heart, and um, they're revealing something about what your kid is thinking about. So always accept all the questions. And if you don't know the answer to the question, it's better, especially with teenagers, to say, I don't know, let me find out, versus trying to make up an answer. That always goes real well. A lot of people ask about length, like how long should my devotional be with my kids? And again, depending on the age, it depends on the length. But I would say this, it needs to be more than five minutes, but it probably doesn't need to be 55 minutes. Now, if you just happen to have that kind of family with those kind of kids and you can go a full hour and dive into God's word, more power to you. I probably need to learn from you. But an hour long is probably too long. A couple minutes is probably too short. Usually when we do it, it's about 20 to 30 minutes is about that time. That's about their attention span anyways. So try to hover around that time period. And if it's way shorter one week, it's no big deal. It's not like you have to make it up on the back end some other time. Let each devotional stand on its own, whether it's just a couple minutes or it goes a little bit longer. Uh, it does not matter on that. Let the mood of the moment, I've learned this through the years, let the mood of the moment be stronger than than the the pressure of trying to finish that devotion. So if you're doing like a devotional and you've only got through half of the page and the moment kind of takes off into a bunch of questions or conversations about something you just talked about or something that may have just come up in their mind, let that guide you. Don't feel the need that you've got to finish that page in order to be a correct devotional. When the moment changes, follow that change. It's kind of like going whitewater rafting. You want to avoid all the rocks, but sometimes the river takes you in different directions in different ways to the right, to the left, or to the center. Allow that to be kind of your family devotion because who knows in reading one thing what might spark in one of your kids that needs to be answered or talked through. So the devotional guide, the Bible that you're reading, whatever chapter you may be on, that's the launching pad to get conversations because the most important thing is to have open and honest dialogue in your family devotional time. 
And one thing that uh, I think we can all relate to if we have teenagers in the house trying to do a family devotion, view the family devotion. This is what I do. View it like you're going on a trip. You know, when you go on vacation with your kids and you get them in the back seat, somebody's always going to complain about something. Somebody's always going to need to use the bathroom. There's always going to be some weird sounds coming from the back, and there will always be weird smells coming from the back, especially if you've got teenage boys, right? So understand that you're on a trip when you do a devotional as a family with teenagers. They may make certain sounds sitting at the kitchen table they shouldn't make. They should make comments that they shouldn't make. They should, uh, you know, act like they're bored to death. Don't let those things distract you and uh, keep plugging along, keep going on that journey with them. And uh, if, if you allow those distractions to happen, then it kind of alters the entire devotional course. So just assume there's gonna be distractions. Assume somebody's not gonna pay attention. Assume somebody's gonna pretend like they don't care, but they really do. Just assume all those things and just go through it and let the moments take you where they need to take you in your family devotional. And remember, a win for the family is to get everybody together on the same page, have a moment of pause, reflect on God, what God's done in our lives, reflect on a scripture for just a couple minutes, whether it's a whole paragraph or whether it's one verse, or reflect on that devotional book that you may have as a family. And sitting down together for a couple minutes, looking each other in the eye, having a meaningful conversation about what the scripture says, and then offering prayer and prayer requests. We do this a lot where it says uh, on Sunday night, uh, when we're done, we'll say, okay, what are you looking for for this next week? What's going on at school this next week? Uh, what are your challenges? What are your concerns? What are some problems that may come our way? That way they get it on the table. You can pray for them. They open up a little bit, which could be hard a lot of times as they get older. And then the next couple of days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, when you're going about your life, you're able to engage with them. Hey, how did that go? I've been praying for you. And it opens up those corridors of conversation. So just remember the win is to sit together in quiet, focus on God for a couple minutes. And number two, drift from that to prayer requests. And if you can get them listening and opening up, then I think what you've done is softened their hearts. And if you soften your kid's heart a little bit, you know as well as I do as a parent, that's the win. The softer the heart, the more they'll listen to you as a parent, but also more importantly, the more they'll listen to God. And so that's what the family devotional is all about. Slowing down, pausing, looking them in the eye, seeing what's on their heart and have their heart softened by God's scripture and by prayer requests and by the love ultimately you have for your children. So hope these are some bullet points that will help you if you have teenagers when you do family devotions to make sure you walk through it and uh, not get tripped up and not put so much guilt and pressure on you as a family and as a parent thinking, I have to do these things just perfectly or they're not gonna work because that's not the case. Everybody's a little different, every family's a little different and just kind of walk through that systematically best you can and bottom line is give effort and effort will be rewarded in your family devotional time.